Um, can you settle an argument? Because um, lots of people are on different sides of the fence, this one. If you were there and you were in charge at Manchester United, would you start Ronaldo? Yes, I would have. Um, I mean, you look at it, how important he has been for, for United so far. If you take his goals away, then uh, I think the situation would be looking but far more grim. I think um, Margaret Carrick in his interview said, yes, I had a good chat with him and Ronaldo was good, but I'm sure that Ronaldo wouldn't have uh, agreed with it uh, because he always wants to play. Mm -hmm. That's him. You know, he always wants to be important for the team. There's no reason to leave him out physically. I think if you look back to the game yesterday, then again, again, in hindsight, I would have seen no reason for him, you know, not to start. So um, that's, that's the, the decision that Michael made in his staff um, and, and hoping for an impact in the last 30 minutes, but there was hardly anything there. It's strange, really, because I'm with you in that one, because I think the one thing about Ronaldo, clearly, <clears throat> if you are, and he might be of an age, he'll, he'll, he'll want to play every game, that goes without saying, but you might feel you might have to leave him out, you know, to give him a rest here and there. But I'm thinking that's the one game you don't leave him out in because he's a big occasion player, he's a big time player. We've seen the goals he's already scored for Manchester United. I was just thinking myself, and listen, Michael's probably thinking, understandably this morning, look, I got it right, we got a good result. Maybe a little bit fortunate, but, 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 but you know, he's a little bit disappointed he didn't hang on to win the game. But I was just surprised that the, the decision to leave Ronaldo out came in that particular fixture. Yeah, yeah, and I think you're not the only one, uh, Ali. I mean, Cristiano Ronaldo is a race car, and as long as there is petrol in the t in the tank, keep driving. It's more about managing him outside those games because he's a training beast as well, you know. But when you get when you get to over the age of thirties, that's that's the time I can still remember when we were when I was there that we sort of managed the over thirties outside the ones that were in the high energy years, let's say in the twenties. So we did manage the ones that were getting into the 30s differently during, you know, during the week. That's where you manage them. That's where you refill the tank. And if that tank is full, which is, you know, body-wise, but also mentally-wise, you keep playing your mm. best players. But, Renny, I mean, if you look at the fact of the game, he come on with half hour to go, they're winning the game 1-0. So surely, tactically, in that moment, you'd say Carrick probably got it right because he's bringing on a fresh Ronaldo when they're 1-0 up. Yeah, I, I, I can see that because obviously at some point you're always going to bring him on. Uh, but if you look at the game and there's much to be made of and say, listen, we had a we had a plan and listen, to be fairly honest, I looked at the game, it was it was Chelsea and it, they were lucky that they weren't, you know, 2-0 down at half time. Again, credit to David <coughs> Gea and, and that was obviously part of the plan, not to concede early on in the game. And the goal they, they scored was just a fluke. It was just mm -hmm. a clearance, a big mistake of... Uh, uh, judgment error or judgment from Jorginho and and uh, Jaden Sancho capitalised it in a fantastic way. Up to then, it was it was all Chelsea, but Chelsea wasn't really creating any cutting edge in the final third. That was the only criticism I think Tuchel can have, with with the intention that that Chelsea was playing and, and United credit to them they defended really really well. Um, but that was the game how it panned out. And yes, if if Ronaldo would have come on, they would have capped it one 0 Everybody would have seen. Sam Carrick's praises, but you need to look through that, I think, at times, because, you know, for me, Manchester United, everybody's talking about now pressing and Gagan pressing with Rangnick maybe coming in and this and that and the other. You know, I don't know where that discussion has come from. Um, pressing is not something that you just introduce from the, the one day to the next. There's a time for pressing. Mm -hmm. But more than anything, what I think Manchester United needs, is needed to go back to, is to play football. Keep the ball. Keep the ball with rhythm. Keep the ball with authority. Open oppositions up. There's no point in pressing the ball and give it away straight away because that's what United keeps doing, you know. And uh, and and that would be my emphasis to making sure if you got Ronaldo in your team, what does he need? He needs service. Where's the service come from? From wide areas, and that is the thing what you need to look into. How can we get players in good positions in wide areas to provide that service for Ronaldo? Because the more quality service, the more goals he will score. Rene, I wanted to read you some comments that Roy Keane made on, on Sky last night. He said, I've studied Manchester United the last few years and changes they've made. I think there's an element that it's a job for the boys. Just wink, wink, look after each other. It's a bit of an old pals act, without a doubt. That's why they're eighth or ninth in the league. What do you think of those comments? Well, you know, Roy is, is obviously very outspoken in, in his ways. And, and, and sometimes I'm, I'm glad we have somebody out there uh, which is like that. But the thing is this, it doesn't really matter whether it's a, 
an old pals, this and that, and the other. It's all about quality. If you look at people, you know, being in 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 the staff and organization of the club, it goes about two things: expertise and experience. And whether they are mates or no mates, I don't care about that. It's all about those two things. Are they bringing the expertise to make a difference for the club in whatever position they hold? And have they got the experience to do so? If not, the proof will be in the pudding. It's there for everybody to see. There's no discussion no, no discussion about it. And I'm sure that, that that is what Roy means. It's nothing personal. But if that's the case and then the quality is not being delivered, yeah, a question is going to be asked. Another another positive, I think, Rennie, for United would be another goal for Sancho. Are we beginning to see the 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 player that we all expected him to uh, expected to see? Delighted for him, Ali, because it, as as you know, it's been a lot of players that that come into to big clubs in the Premier League, and especially with United, there's, there's extra pressure, and some players they hit the ground running. With Jaden, it was a little bit different. So you have to start, in it, and obviously, when United wasn't playing at the best, it, there's even more pressures and. You know, when the game is good, it's all about confidence. And he scored this 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 cracking goal against Villarreal yesterday. That was him, pace, skill, a little bit of this guy's great clinical finish. And that gives him a massive boost. And that's what those young players need. They need boost and confidence because that's where they thrive on. So mm-hmm. delighted for him. Mm. Um, tell us a bit about what we can expect with, with Ranyuk coming in. If, if this is confirmed, and it sounds like it's actually uh, going to be confirmed uh, very soon. Did the idea that... United are going for an interim coach before they get their next manager. Did that surprise you at all? Do you think he's a good person for the job? Well, that has to that has to be seen. What I do know, because I don't know him personally, I know of him and I've read a lot about him. He's got a, a person with a very strong, um, you know, philosophy, as we all know. He's done some fantastic building projects in in the German Bundesliga with Hoffenheim and Leipzig. He's got a very strong philosophy in terms of how he wants his team to play. That's why every time that we're pressing. And Gagan pressing comes up. Uh, all the coaches club, Tuchel will speak highly of him because he's clear in what he wants. His messages will be very, very clear. But coming into Manchester United as an interim coach for six months, he is a philosophy guy that wants to implement his philosophy over the long term at the club. Yes, I know they want to keep him at the club for another an extended two years. But if there's another coach comes in who has got slightly different philosophies, how is that going to all add up? He needs to come in with an immediate impact. It's a different kind of management. You need to look at the squad that you've got and what are you going to do? Are you going to maximise it and, and address the things that are more important or are you, are you trying to push through your own philosophy and trying to hope that the players can play the way that you want? Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.